She is just spectacular, isn't she? Yes. Now, That's incredible. The, the other fish. Can what is going on, YouTube? And welcome back to the channel. Now, we've got another tank visit today, and the guy's actually got a few tanks. So, um, it's a guy called Julian. He's all the way down to a place called Bry, which is quite near um, Hastings and Eastbourne, that sort of way. So, I've got a bit of a drive. That's why I'm up super early on a Saturday morning again. So, yeah, stay tuned. Let's go and see what tanks he's got, and let's go and see what his mate's shop like. Right, everyone, I've just got to Julian's house, and this is the first tank we've come to see. So, this is in his actual house. And then we've got an incredible pleco room downstairs, which we're going to go and see after this. But check this tank out. There's some real nice bits in here. So, mate, what we got? Well, this is my zebra tank with um, some very old fish in there indeed. Um, I believe there's a female in there, which is probably going to be about um, nearly coming up to 20 years old. Yeah, she's a big girl, isn't she? Um, there's a few juveniles here. That's that's one of her offspring, which is coming up to about the three-year-old mark. And that fish there is what I would call <laughs> some kind of like an auntie in the uh, yeah. in the zebra family. <laughs> they seem to share they seem to share the duties very well. They're very friendly with the fry when they do breed. But I'll freely admit to you, Mick, um, they haven't bred for about three years for reasons unknown to me. Hmm. I'm not an expert on things like this, but I'm not forcing them. Um, males in here, he's, he's raised a few fry in his time, um, but I tend to find that they seem to do better when there's just one male per tank. Hmm. I've lost a lot of fish having two or three males in a tank, even if I've had a heavy ratio of females. Some people say um, it's best to have uh, one female and two males. I think whatever formula you use, I think it's all down to the fish. Mm. And I don't think that anyone's, yeah, personalities. I don't think anyone's got a right or a wrong um, with that. But I really did en enjoy keeping lots of different groups of them. And I had a wild male that was very, very uh, prolific and produced a lot of young for me. Um, which I was able to spread out on lots of different tanks. Um, but having scaled it back, it's allowed me to enjoy some of the other um, species that I've always wanted to keep. Mm. So for me, the the pleco addiction started with the zebra, which <laughs> yeah, for me is yeah. sort of like the ultimate flagship pleco, really. Um, and um, yeah, as I say, you'll you'll see a few more different fish that we've got in the fish house. The zebras are very special to me. Um, that's why I keep them indoors. Um, yeah, there's definitely something about them in there. You know that it's it puts it, it makes people want to keep them as well because they don't get that big. Yes. You know, which is nice. And you yeah. keep, can keep them in smaller tanks if that makes sense. But that's right. Yeah. I mean, well, this this tank's not a huge tank. It's two and a half foot long. Um, but one of the things I found very useful was making a slate terrace. Hmm. And um, the reason why I wanted to show you this tank was to basically try and help people who are keeping uh, s some of these smaller high pan sisters, carnivorous plecos to give them the territory and the space that they need in a in a smaller tank by maximizing on floor space. Yeah. Um, I tend to find that they're very aggressive um, and if you can give them a lot of security, they do seem to like overhangs. So I think the best way of achieving that was by uh, siliconing some slate um, into little compartments and uh, then putting the caves and small bits of bogwood in there. And, uh, and, and it also looks really good, doesn't it, as well? Yeah. It does, uh, doesn't it? I'll be honest with you, some people will super glue them, some people will silicone them. You do have to be careful when you're lifting them out, but it's a great way of uh, actually getting to mm. caves, fry, because all you've got to do is lift them out. Yeah, and it keeps the flow going all around the tank as well, doesn't it? So you're not really getting any dead spots or anything, are you? Yeah. It's in the middle, isn't it? It's That's good. right. I think the, the hygiene aspect of uh, pleco keeping should be, you know, really stressed as being important because mm. we're feeding meaty food. Um, the temperatures are generally higher than most tanks most of my tanks run at 30 so the food can go off very quickly so you've got to be yeah. able to spot it yeah and the filtration's got to be right as well isn't it that's it yeah so here on this tank we're just running a, a very simple 
Aqua One uh, 750 with three media chambers. Mm. I run a lot of Kintama media, with, which is the round stuff with the high surface area. Mm. And I tend to not use anything too fine like filter wool. I'll always use the coarse sponge, uh, if any. But, um, and then some of the fluval um, biomedia. Yeah, it's good stuff, isn't it? Absolutely. That's lovely, mate. I do love a zebra plaque. I and I say on the on the return is a Eheim diffuser, mm. which unfortunately is very very difficult to get hold of now for some reason due to the costs of uh, shipping to the UK after Brexit. Yeah, uh, I've been told by some of my suppliers, but. You can make venturis out of various different things. Yeah. I think you've just got to be a bit creative. It's either that or having an airstone in there as a secondary backup. It's always a good idea. But cost-wise, especially in the bedroom as well for noise. Noise, that's right, yeah. It, it, the venturis make a, a, a sort of like a good good sort of... Uh, well, that's it. You got, and you've got three plugs running in this tank, haven't you? Yeah. It's three plugs here. You've got the light, the heater and the, um, the filter. That's it, yeah. yeah. So it's a really low maintenance tank, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest with you, um, looking at the costs of everything, uh, including the fish house, um, it's costing me around about anything between £1.20 to £2 a day in winter mm. to, to run the fish house and this tank. So That's fine. It's isn't not it? too bad. No, that's good. good. Yeah, a lot of people have been really scared, aren't they, with like, the energy prices. I've been having a lot of messages from people saying, how are you getting on with them? If you're into the hobby, just carry on. Mm. Look, you've got to pay the prices, you know what I mean? We'll keep fish keepers, aren't we? You know, you've got to keep your fish alive. If you've got tanks that are understocked, close a couple of them down, start putting some fish together. You know, we've just got to get through it, haven't we? Yeah, so I have noticed uh, a lot of uh, marine keepers on mm. Aquarist classified yeah. shutting down their tanks. Yeah. And, it, and it, you look at each advert and it just sounds absolutely heartbreaking. I know, I know. I know, but they, they're running like 15 plugs huh, for like, that's a right. 500 litre tank, they've got skimmers and all sorts of stuff, haven't they? That's right. Yeah. Reactors, a lot. Right, mate, should we go and see the um, the special room, shall we? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so we're just about to go in Julian's fish room, which is just behind us. And you built this all yourself, mate, didn't you? Yeah, with a with a help from a friend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, we uh, put a uh, sheet tin roof construction with shiplap with uh, four inch insulation. Um, I got this door from uh, someone who was uh, almost giving it away. Yeah, it's an old front door, isn't it? Yeah, it's just an old front door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's even got a knock on it. Yeah. Let's go and see what's yeah. going. Well, let's go and see what's in here. Let's go have a look. There's something about these rooms, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> wow, mate, this is incredible, man. Yeah, so, um... Yeah, where do you want to start? He's out, he's out now, look. Look at him. Oh, wow. Or oh, is it a female? That is a female. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. She is absolutely mind-blowing, isn't she? Look at the tail on her. Wow. It's lovely to see um, cactus plecos with the full fin extensions. Mm. A lot of the times in busy community tanks that have a lot going on, um, you tend to not see the full extensions. Mm. I can only assume that um, in the wild, all of these things are used to navigate, yeah. used to find their way around Food, the environment. Yeah. And um, it's great to see. There are some instances due to fighting, um, which you can't help in a, in a tank, where they sometimes get them bashed or lost. But I've, I tend to find now with the stable stock situation they tend to know each other quite well and aggressions at a minimum mm. um, so in this tank we've got four LDA 105s um, I got these I was very fortunate to get these from um, a very interesting guy called Marcin Glowacki right yeah now, Marcin Glowacki runs a uh, company called GM Aquatics and I'm sure he's not going to mind me um, Given him a bit of a plug there. No. Um, he was able to source these fish for me 
um, and um, I, I, I'm absolutely grateful for the opportunity to uh, to own them. Um, they're spectacular. I'm very fortunate to have uh, two males and two females. Um, the great thing about the uh, Typhoon Plecos is, is that they're very, very outgoing, as you can see. Yeah. I almost find their behaviour slightly unusual mm. because most um, Pleco species are quite retiring. That's right, yeah. But um, my friend Steve has got some very, very nice uh, 114s, which mm. I believe you've got. Yeah. And he's also got spinosis, and they, they act like aquatic puppies. Yeah, yeah. They're always out the front, yeah. they're always doing something. And uh, these, these Typhoon are very, very uh, playful with each other. They'll go in and out of the pipes. Um, there is uh, a bit of a pecking order and a bit of aggression, um, but mainly at feeding times. They seem to be settled now. Um, I will freely admit I did have five, but unfortunately one of them passed away. He was a male, so I think that maybe that was just one male too many. Male had a tear up, yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't know, do you? Yeah. What size tank is it, the bud? Because it's, it's really yeah, wide, is, isn't it? This is a five uh, by three by two. Mm. Um, and it was built by uh, ND Aquatics. Yeah. Now, I will say this, <coughs> I'll be honest with you, some people have had very good experiences with ND, yeah. and some people have had poor experiences. I'd say my experience was poor, maybe due to a language or a communication problem. Um, they didn't come with weirs, and I, they, they drilled it, but they didn't come with weirs. So I had to actually get in the tank yeah. and put the weirs in, and right. it was a bit of a... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't have a lot of, uh, didn't right. have a lot of space, but we, we managed to get it done with um, Steve from Fishy Business's help. Uh, Steve at Fishy Business, you'll be going over to see his shop a bit later, mm. and he's based in Stone Cross in Eastbourne, so if anyone's out there down that way and wants to see a really good, um, classic, old-fashioned, but modern fish shop at the same time. It's the place to go. So the return goes down, and then you'll follow through to here. Yeah, you can't be sunk, can you? Look at it, look. And we've got, um, we've got some uh, brushes here, normal pond brushes. Yeah. And that will go into the jack matting, and then under here, because this used to be an old marine uh, sump refugium, and then it will come up and into the alpha grog, which I think is about 50 kilos of alpha grog. Yeah, loads in there. We've got some crushed uh, mussel shell to keep the pH up, and then it runs through all this jack matting, through the um, pump, through the non-return valve, into the clover leaf, um, one kilowatt heater, and then out to the tanks. Um, there's our returns, and these are all with a homemade Venturi made by Steve. Um, that's his own design with a little elbow and an airline. Yeah, it's quite a good idea. And it's it? very, very powerful flow. So in this tank now, I'm going to have to get get my hands in there to show yeah. everyone what's yeah. what's in here because these fish are completely different to the typhoons. So here we have some L25s, and from what I can understand, um, they are very, very secretive fish. They tend to like um, dark um, environments. I think you're absolutely right, mate. Yeah, definitely. Do you want to handle that? Should be okay. Yeah. Should be okay. What I'd like to say about the 25s is I think a lot of it is to do with the eye. Right. The eye seems to be quite unique in the fact that it has what people call like a hooded iris. Mm. So that, the protection on the eye must mean that that fish is very sensitive to light, I think. Yeah. I, I don't know, but I think. Yeah, you could be on saying there, you might be right. Now I'm gonna try and get the most impressive fish out because this fish impressed me when I went and bought it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Where's she in the big tunnel, I take it? I think so, <laughs> I think so. It's gonna be a bit of trial and error here. Yeah, right? let's see what happens. Um, but I got this fish from a guy who was a monster fish keeper in um, Essex. And he had a tank that was nine by three by three. Mm. And he had a Nile perch, he had some very, black, uh, very big uh, black diamond stingrays, 
Uh, and he also had a three foot goonch cat. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this fish was holding its own mm. in that tank. Yeah. And I have to say, I could see that fish from his living room window outside. Yeah. And I knew I had to have it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he bought it. It's an armor giant, isn't it? Yeah, he bought it, I think. Yeah, this, this is about as close as you'll get or well, the closest I'll get to, oh, a, look at it. to a super red. Wow, man, look at her. She is incredible, isn't she? That is massive, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's a bit deceptive, Mick. Yeah, uh, the you're fish, right. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> struggling. you're struggling, yeah. Um, this fish is looks about as big as when I bought it. Yeah, do you uh, she's done then? It's difficult to say, mm. difficult to say. Um, no, all right, no, they've made it easy. For yeah, me. you see so that, yeah. We've got a process of, <laughs> we're going to play musical pipes You've got now. four other pipes in here, haven't you? And then, so. and then we'll be able, it's a good thing, because you really want to see, yeah. you Look want to the see the fish. On her. You want to see the fish, and I want people who watch your channel to enjoy these fish. Oh, mate, she is incredible. Fish. And him. Is that, a, is that a male, the one at the back? Um, yeah, I've got that. one, the reason why this tank is such a lovely tank, it's because I've only got one male. Yeah. And we're gonna find him. <laughs> she is just spectacular, isn't she? Yes. Now, That's incredible. The, the other fish came from Steve, my mate, who got it from a very well-known um, importer called Neil Hardy. Right, yeah. And Neil Hardy's based up in uh, Carshalton in Surrey. And uh, those guys are absolutely fantastic. Um, in the olden days, um, that fish was very affordable. Oh, that's the 24. Yeah, just see that, yeah. Yeah. It's oh, spectacular really, tail, isn't it? Yeah. That, that 24 surprised me. When I bought it, I actually thought that was a cheeky little seven-pointer yeah, that yeah. had been mislabeled. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I thought I'm going to buy that fish. If, it is, if it's a seven-pointer, what a result. Mm. If it's not, no hardship. I've always wanted a 24. Get them all out for you. This one's an interesting one. Can you see the colour bleed? Yeah, yeah. It's like a paint job. Mm. Um, if you were a. Uh, well, thanks for taking all the pipes out, mate. I know how hard it is. No, and it's alright, mate. Especially I, a tank like I, this. I, I want to. I want to do this because um, it's also good for me mm. to evaluate some of the fish. Yeah. And and see what's going oh, on. Oh, look at look at. Her. She is a seriously special fish, isn't she? And now somewhere in here will be the male. There's a there's a difference also in what I would call some of the base colours hmm. of some of these fish because I have been told. Ah, uh, here we there go. Is. Now it. this one is what we call Altamira. He's he's very similar to my one. Yeah. Very similar. You've got more, the other guy's got more reds. Mine's more orangey yeah. like your one. From what I can understand, Mick, these three that are lighter base colour mm. come from the South Felix River system. Right. The darker one, they call it Altamira. But whether that's the collection point or not, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. But I can't say for for sure. I'll just get this out. This does look very, doesn't look very professional. <laughs> Have your bits fall in. Do you want some towels, mate? You look absolutely soaked. <laughs> no, I'll be alright, I'll be alright. That's the great thing about having the fish house is you can get absolutely yeah. crazy, go crazy. And I normally do when I come back from having a couple of beers. Yeah. And it just seems like the right time to do some maintenance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bit of fun, isn't it? Yeah. So that's your that's your 25s and the 24. I'll have to say that the growth rate on the 24 has been phenomenal. Well, really fast. Really fast, yeah, yeah. yeah. I haven't had that fish for more than a year. And It's funny you say that. I've got an L24 at home. I've got it from Wolf Aquatics. It was probably smaller than this guy here. And it's probably three times the size of that now. And I've had it eight months. Mm. And as you know, some plecos are very slow, aren't they? Yeah. And they take years. Yeah. But it's, that's good you say that because mine's growing fast as well. Yeah, I, I, you wouldn't believe I had a good old clear up last night and uh, <laughs> you wouldn't think it. They're big fish, mate. They eat a lot. Yeah. It's going to happen, isn't it? 
Right, so that's them. I shall put the pipes back in. Um, Mate, they are incredible. I shall put the pipes back in now because I don't want to upset them. No, too much. they're absolutely incredible, mate. No, I'm just grateful that that, uh, that female is just. Yes. Uh, now, unfortunately, as I say, in the UK, we don't tend to get the best fish, and that I can say um, with a lot of confidence because a lot of the a lot of the bigger fish and the good the good fish go straight to the um, Asian market mm. because the Asians and the uh, Japanese um, they will pay a higher price yeah because it's more important in their culture yeah the good thing about it is now is, is that a lot more people um, in Brazil are selling to the highest bidder and if there are people in the UK that are willing to yeah pay the money yeah they'll get the quality fish yeah. um, even though that fish is stunning by Asian standards, it's still not a super red. Really? Yeah, because it's got a bit of colour bleed in there. Mm. I'm not fussy. No, I'm, neither abso am I. I'm absolutely I, stoked. I've never seen one so red, ever. It's the first time I've seen one that red. Well, Steve may or may not appreciate me saying this, but Steve's got some stunning 25s that will uh, put mine to shame. Really? Yeah. In, in his shop or at his house? At his house, yeah. But uh, hopefully, once he gets all his projects uh, done, he'll forgive me for saying this, he'll, <laughs> he'll invite you in with open arms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be good to go and see his stuff as well. All right, pop these pipes back in, boys. I do like simple setups. Yeah. Um, because, you know, you just got to put your pipes back in and a bit of wood and you're done. Mm. Oh, yeah. So this piece was a really interesting piece of chestnut which I found in the woods. Yeah, because you, people look at this and they think, I can only get that from fish shops. Yeah. Don't they? Yeah. You know? You might spend 40, 60 notes on that. Easy. Absolutely. Um, I'd encourage people to go foraging for chestnut. It's perfectly good for um, aquariums. And mm. just soak it. Soak it for a long time. You know, don't be afraid to soak it for six months, a year. Yeah. Take it out, scrub it with a wire brush. Yeah. Go for it again. No, they're incredible, mate. Honestly, absolutely amazing. Right, so yeah, so the typhoons. Luckily, I shouldn't have to really take. No, out. we can see these guys. They're uh, they love the camera. This lot. Yeah. <laughs> and what's the lighting you got in all the tanks then? These are Aqua ones. Um, yeah, this is an Aqua one plant glow on this one. Yeah. And I think that one over there is some kind of a marine glow. I got them off of Steve. He, he just tells me what to buy, and I buy them. I'm just grateful that I don't get um, I don't get my pants pulled down. <laughs> no, that's right. Because <laughs> uh, you can go into a shop and they'll sell you something. And it'll be like, oh, you need that, sir. That's yeah. 110 quid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or you can spend 300 quid on some lights, you know, and you don't even need them, do you? Yeah. Um, what? I'd like to show you this tank now. People will now officially know that he's nuts because not only have we got LDA 105s up there, we've also got an additional six in here. Yeah. Why did I do that? I don't know. <laughs> uh, it seemed like a good idea at the time. I realized how valuable and rare these fish were and how hard they were to get hold of. Um, and I thought to myself, I'd like to take them because A, we don't know how um, the restrictions from Brazil will be in the future. Mm. Things may change, and uh, if I do, then at least there's some in the UK yeah. to sustain the UK hobby. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Now, really I'll, good idea. I'll start doing this slowly so you can see how fantastic cactus plec juveniles look with the, with the extensions. Mm. They really are special. Some of the streamers are almost 50% of the body length. Yeah. Look at them, look. wow. You'll see a lot of variation um, oh, yeah, in the spotting look. as well. Um, I just want to say at this particular point, um, a big uh, big thank you to uh, the gentleman that appeared on your um, Pleco video uh, with the tip about feeding muscle. Yeah, Martin. Martin, Martin yeah. yeah. Uh, I have to say, I've had a few close calls with young Plecos uh, with muscle. 
and um, it has been interesting to well, we all learn from each other, didn't you? Yeah. You know what? I, I didn't. I didn't have a clue. I've done it for years. Just throw the muscle in there. That's it. That's Sometimes it. I don't even defrost them. Just yeah. throw them straight in. Yeah. So okay, we're going to do another session of pipe pulling. Yeah, here. yeah. Um, <laughs> You're knackered after this. No, it's good. Good. <laughs> I just want people here in the UK to have a good appreciation and and. and of, of some of the fish that aren't readily available so that and, and, and sort of like show them just a method of how I keep them successfully hmm. in a relatively simple environment I mean we're all busy we've all got jobs that's right um, but by the same token there's all aspects of us that like a bit of conservation yeah this is for me a long-term project I'd like to say in the next 10 years they'd be in a position where they can start breeding. Hmm. Um, now that's, that's, that's nice to know as well, because a lot of people do buy fish and go, oh, I'm bored of that now. I'm bored of that now, I want to get some... They do become thing, a you know? bit of a commodity and, and, and sort of like they go around, you know, being swapped and changed. Yeah. Um, the other gem in this tank, Mick, is two L82s, yeah. of, of which I'm absolutely... I know, they're, they're absolutely huge as well, aren't they? Yeah, they're absolutely, I'm absolutely over the moon with these fish. That's a good example of the streamers. Yeah, look at it. But yeah, I did have a close call feeding um, some muscle to some of these juveniles and one of them was very sick and yeah. I had to take him out and almost rub his belly. Yeah, yeah, just to get the digestive going. Well, there yeah. we go. There's an LA. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Very nice. Again, when you've got about, when you've got about eight fish in 800 litres of water, you know they're going to do well. Yeah. Uh, I'll hopefully, Mick, uh, I'll pop them out in front of the camera. Now, there's a corker in here. Yeah. It's an absolute corker in here. Look at that. Look at the child on it. Wow. Tell you what I'll do. Yeah, reach behind you and get a bucket. Yeah. Yeah, we can have a good look at him, can't we? Yeah, I reckon so. Don't panic! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see, we've got... Is there a few in there? Is there? Yeah, I, I can hear them. Few in there. Sort of wrestling, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, okay. That could be a bit difficult. Yeah. Come on, boys. They've oh. got their suction cups on, mate. Yeah. <laughs> it's like trying to put a plug out. No, I think I shall, I shall, I shall leave them. Yeah, definitely. Don't want to stress them out, do we? But uh, here we go. Yeah. So yeah, I couldn't show you the. Uh... Oh yeah, there's one eighty-two in there. Yeah. The other one's in here. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lovely size, isn't it? But I'm looking forward to when they get slightly bigger. So, so what do they go up to the 80s, Susan? How big? Yeah. I've, I've seen fishermen hold them in their hands and they look like a substantial pleco around about the sort of like the 8 inch mark. Hmm. So I'm really looking forward to seeing them get that size, but yeah. whether they do or not in captivity, I won't know until I get there. And this tank here, is it running off these externals here, is it? Yeah, so I've got two 1250s on there, mm. full of media, and I've got an inline um, JBL 500 watt uh, external heat, which I really like. Yeah, is it good, yeah? Really, really reliable. Um, in winter time, I've only got to open that door, and the green light will pop on. Yeah. As if to say, it sense the Yeah, that's right. Change. Yeah, well, you know it's working, isn't it? Yeah. Apologies to anyone who was upset at home about me trying to shake my plecos <laughs> out of the pipe, but yeah. you know, they are my plecos. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's have a little look at in a minute as well. 
Oh yeah. And I see you've got another another racking going here as well, which has got a few tanks of fish in it, isn't it? That's right, yeah. These this is all gonna be powered by air um, air filters. Yeah. Just to keep the costs down. Mm. Um, yeah, because you could get one big one that runs it all. Yeah. Very fortunate to have uh, these um air pumps that have the uh, manifold on them with the taps. That's right, yeah. So just above you there, yep. I've got some tap situation going. Yep. They're really good for regulating. And we need to talk about your water change system here as well, don't we? Yeah, sure. So I've just got a standard um, garden water butt. And I've drilled a hole in the top and put a very small water feature pump in there hmm. um, and so what we've got is we've got it so water comes in I'll put a garden hose on that yeah that fills it up I've got an air stone in here and that will uh, and I'll put some dechlorinator in there yeah and then that goes up and I can tee off so this will be for the big system and that will be for this side of the fish house and that's for that tank of juveniles down there. Yes, and you can turn them on and off when you like, it's such a good idea isn't it? Yeah, I was a, what, I, what I didn't realise was is that I didn't actually need Jubilee clips. The push fit mechanism on these is just enough so yeah. if you're doing this at home don't make the mistake I did of shelling out. Yeah, you know, it's scary though isn't it? Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. It's water. I know it's not going to be running At constantly. Pressure, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, constant. But but yeah, in the future, Mick, when you come back next time, I may or may not have redone all of this, but with solid pipe, mm. and I might upgrade the pump, mm. and then get the other side of the racking on all in one system. Well. Yeah, yeah. Do you know it's a no-brainer, isn't it? Yeah, I'm a little bit worried about mixing the water for that side to this side because at the moment everything's, you know, there's no disease. Um, and when I'm starting to share things, I start to get a bit worried, especially with new arrivals. Mm. I used to like quarantining fish in the house and let them pass a good three weeks before they come in. Yeah, here. yeah. But now I'm a bit more careful. So what I'll probably do is I'll have another water uh, set up here, separate yeah. just for that side, and keep the plecos, you know, on, on that one. Mm. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. I know how scary that is. Yeah. Especially when you've got a lot of money's worth of fish. Yeah, yeah, well this and, is it, I mean... And you've been growing them up for so many years. Yeah, I'll, I'll be, I mean, just on the money side of things, when you're buying fish at the time, yeah, you do count the cost of the money. After a while, you know, they're part of your life, it's not really, you're not really worried or thinking about the money anymore, you're just thinking about what the fish. Yeah, of course. Um, in this tank here we've got, um, we've got some Titanic plecos, four Titanics, and four smaller L82 and a uh, black scoby. Right, here we go. Are you going for the pipes again? We're going for the pipes. <laughs> We're gonna Yeah, so this wood here, this is oak. Yeah. And again this was this was uh, collected from the woods. Um, always go for dead and you'll never go wrong. It looks incredible, doesn't it? Yeah, if you go for dead you know that the bark's gone off of it. Yeah. And the process of you know drying out started yeah again I just put those in the water butts good six months to a year you'll you'll brush them off they'll put they'll collect all of this slime on it which sort of stinks and looks horrible mm. but then after a while it's just so, it's just so worth it yeah that's right and I bet I bet obviously with the plecos it's quite dark systems like the lights but I bet people with the scapes and stuff they don't know about this oak really I don't think so, yeah, they're, they're all getting manzanita wood. That's right. They're all Look, getting stuff from... And I bet it gives it a different colour, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely, without a doubt. I mean, that piece there. You can cable tie them. You know, you can do so many different things with uh, with, with oak. Sorry, the light's not good here, is it? <laughs> That's all right. I'll, uh, That's another bit of oak as well then, yeah? That's another bit of oak, yeah. Real interesting bits. I tend to try and find and leave as much as I can coming off of these, because yeah. you never know which how you're going to arrange it. No, that's it, and you can always mix it about later on, can't you? Yeah. Now this is an L82. Uh, oh, these are two L82s. Oh, yeah, look at them. 
Now these ones are selected because they've got some very, very wide spots. Mm. They're not they're not finely spotted, they're very unusually spotted. And also in here I've got some some loricara or what, what, what do they call them? Uh, whiptails. Yeah. Um, I've had these for quite a while. And believe it or not, those are black tail line tetras, but they're not looking very black or taily at the moment. No. <laughs> they look very scared, but there we go. Um, right oh, here we go. Um, but the Titanics are very, very underrated plecos. Um, they're some of the most beautiful plecos you'll find. Hello? Yeah, oh, yeah, there is one. Yeah. Oh, sweet, lovely. Here he comes. Right, here we go. Now this one is, is quite a light colour. Yeah, nice, nice. But it's done really well. I've got a couple at home as well. What have we got in here? Titanics. Oh, that's another 82. Yeah, Titanic's a very nice fish. Mm. Very nice fish. They're again, they're, they're the kind of fish that you look at and you go, how is that so beautiful and yep. yet so under the radar? Yeah. Another one. I tend to like cactus plecos yeah. that are of a certain type. So I learnt this when I was. Um, thinking about monster fish keepers, hmm. there was a guy called Sudasmart. Right. Sudasmart. That rings a bell that name, yeah. Yeah. I think his name will come to me. Um, he's a very interesting guy. He suffered from multiple sclerosis, but he specialised in keeping plecos. And he managed to identify that there was a difference between your 114s hmm. and your spinosis and uh, the kind of cactus placos that had a, a very round face. Yeah. And then there was the typhoon, the 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 uh, scarlet pleco, the Titanic, that were almost from the same kind of family within the cactus placos yeah. because of the head shape's different. So I found that to be quite interesting and I I, I tend to like um, that particular type of fish. But there's the black scoby. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you there. I do like the cactus types. I've got, I've got quite a few myself at home. Yeah. But you never get to see them sometimes, you know? No, and some of the best plecos came from um, some of these companies like Aquarium Glazer. Now, I'd like to show you this one. This one's a stunner. It's the smallest one. Yeah. But the coloration on it, I'll try and get him under the light. Have a look at that. Yeah, he's lovely, isn't he? Yeah, he's lovely. Incredible fish, isn't it? Yeah. And they get to a nice size as well. Yes, I mean, from what I can understand, they're not going to get as large as the Typhoon. No. I think the Typhoon gets to almost one of the largest, about 16, 16 to 18 inches, same as with the 25. Yeah. But um, the Titanics don't seem to get as large. This is another interesting bit of clay. This is a ridge tile. Yeah, I see that, yeah. <laughs> Look at these boys. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Oh, hello. Please. Look at the tail on him. Yeah, let's get him out and have a look. Right up. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, he's, he's climbing back. He's climbing back up. <laughs> right up. Wow. Look at his tail. Beautiful, isn't it? I mean, I'd encourage people that are keeping plecos to get the best out of them. Mm. And if, you, if your plecos are looking like that in captivity, it ain't a bad thing. No, you're doing so right, aren't you? Uh, the trouble is, you do get a lot of what I call, it's a bit like stamp collecting. You know, you've got to get them all. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Another one. Wow, look at them go. Yeah, the black scoby. Yes, that was a that was an interesting fish. I'd like to see about getting some more. Mm. Um, they're very very nice fish when they're settled. Obviously, he's looking a little stressed now, but that big colour goes jet black. Yeah. But yeah, please YouTube enjoy these L82. What I would call a very very oddball kind of pattern. Yeah, it's strange, isn't it? Yeah. 
So some L82 are very, very finely um, spotted. There they go, all back in the cave, look. Start putting these what have we got here? Are these rice borers? Are they rice borers? Oh right, yeah. yeah. So these are ember, ember tetras. Ember tetras, right. Yeah, I love them. Yeah, they do look cool. Nice shell, aren't they? I love them. I absolutely love them. I don't know why, they're just so beautiful. Small underrated tetra yeah. that have never harmed any pleco fry. No. Um, they just love to do their thing. And they probably do quite a good job at cleaning up as well, don't they? Oh yeah, they're lovely. They're lovely. I've got to get some more, and to be fair, uh, Mick, I've actually got to take them out of here because I think the flow is a little bit too fast for them. Um, I'd like to see them thrive, so I'll probably put them in a um, a small a small tank on the rack mm. in the future. Again, another bit of. Uh, Another bit of uh, chestnut there from the woods. I tend to put them. I tend to put the pipes down and then put the the bogwood on top, and that just keeps the um, just keeps the ground well. I say clear. It's not really yeah, clear now. Yeah, I know. It's only because we've mixed it <laughs> up, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. 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 Then there's nothing really touching the bottom except from the pipes, is there? That's right. Yeah. Again, some days I'll feed. Sorry, I'll feed um, um, king tiger prawns. Yeah, yeah. And then mussel, uh, and then pellet food in that kind of rotation. And the pellet food I feed is a mixture of hikari, hikari carnival. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Which is um, very good. Yeah, it smells, doesn't it? it does smell. Yeah. And uh, Doctor Bassler. That, yeah, that rings a bell as well. I don't, I don't think I've ever used it, but I've definitely heard of that. Dr. Bassler. I don't rate it, mate. I don't rate it. it, it, it the, sometimes it's very hit and miss. Sometimes the fish will take it. They've got to be absolutely Hank Marvin to take it. Yeah. Um, so, a bit hit and miss. I'll tell you, I've had a lot of good, good success with Vitalis. Yeah. They can't resist that. Mm. Um, and they say Hikari. They love it. Yeah, it's so probably, expensive. I know, I know. You do so a bag, it's like 35 quid, isn't it? Shit. Um, good old polycarb here for the lid. Okay, same thing again. Um, we've got oak here. Um, now these, uh, you, you had these featured in Jack Heathcote's uh, video, This um, these leperinus. Right, yeah. Some people call them strawberry leperinus. Um, but they're, they're from the anostomid family. Um, they're very nice uh, headstanders. Some call them jewel spotted headstanders. They've been very popular. They come from Suriname or Guyana, mm. um, and they get to about this size. Relatively peaceful. I haven't lost any fish with them. Most headstanders are quite. They can be. A bit, they can be. You know, a bit. A bit thuggish. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and in here. I will have, hopefully, a polka dot cactus pecker. I can pecker. see something hanging out, yeah. <laughs> Let's have a look. Oh, he's a boy, isn't he? Oh, yeah. You've been a bugger. Yeah, look. Oh, wow. Lovely, isn't he? The growth rate on these has been absolutely phenomenal. I haven't had the, I haven't had these fish for a year, mm. and I and they were an inch and a half, two inches when yeah. I got them. Um, I've never seen a growth rate as fast as I have. There he goes. Chunky old fish, isn't he? Very chunky. Yeah. Is there another one in there? Then is there's there? a little one. Yeah. In there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, not yeah. I did have four, and I'll be the first to admit, I don't know where two went. Really? Yeah, yeah. But I will say, I did have them in with the big typhoons. Right, okay. Makes sense then, doesn't it? I just don't know what happened. Yeah. Um, I think maybe either they lost out of feeding time, and they just got cleaned up. Yeah. Oh. Well, 
Look at the size of your typhoons. I, I think you might be right there. Yeah, yeah. definitely. These, uh, these, if you, these, uh, these pipes are very nice. These are either land drainage pipes or chimney liners mm. from the old days. Um, I, because I, of my job, I always come across interesting bits and pieces, and I found these to be just ideal for giving a lot of cover to yeah. some of the fish. Um, some of the more delicate fish, I'd probably grind those edges off just to make it a bit smooth on entry. But these cactus, these cactus placos can handle it. Yeah, they're like bulldogs, aren't they? And it, well, Steve always says to me, he goes, "You molly coddle your fish too much." <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. That's lovely, mate. The fish room's amazing. Oh, thanks, mate. Um, I've got a few smaller community fish over here, um, which are just sort of my entry into more um, conventional um, species that I'd like to breed. Mm. I've got some pygmy quarries and some lace garamis in there. Have you got a torch? Oh, a torch, yeah. Do yes, sorry. Yeah, you see, mate. There we go. Oh yeah, look at the colours on that, look. And that's with no light on it so whatsoever. That's just literally you shining that. I, I tend to find fish do really well without the overhead light. Mm. Um, I just want to say um, a very, very big thank you to World of Water in Rolvenden for selling me that pair of fish for four quid. Yeah. You know, uh, especially in this day and age where, you know, everything's so expensive. Yeah, it's the best four quid you've ever spent, isn't it? Oh, it's a stunning, yeah. stunning fish. Yeah. Um, I'm, I keep a lot of South American fish and it does take a lot for me to buy something not from that continent. Mm. Um, not because I'm a snob or anything, but just because uh, I like to keep certain things separate. Yeah. And these little pygmy quarries, again, you know, you can pick them up for a pound at World of Water. Yeah. Um, I've got to say, World of Water for community fish are absolutely amazing. Mm. Same thing with these um, stir-by quarries. These were, these were a fiver a piece. Um, and in this day and age, again, great prices. Yeah, lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Five quid, you know, you can have a, 10 of them at the bottom of the tank, it's really cool, doesn't it? Yeah. These, uh, the other fish in here are diamond tetras, one of my favorite tetras. Um, really lovely spangly colors. They're very, very underrated. Um, and I'd love to get these breeding. So as the racking progresses, I'll start getting some spawning mops and start to work a little bit more uh, with these fishes. Mm. I mean, over here, you've got what I would call the closest thing I could find to a traditional bog standard angel. Yeah. They're lovely, aren't they? Yeah, I, I, lo I love fish that look like how they were supposed to look. Mm. When you looked at magazines back in the uh, 70s and the 80s, that's what an angel fish looked like. Um, now you have all the modern varieties and yeah. everything like that, but. I'd again, I'd like to try and breed these. And then over here we've got um, some red whiptails, which I really, really like the look oh, yeah. of. I, I saw them in a shop. Some people call them blood red whiptails. Um, other people call them super reds. Um, again, no problem, no hesitation in throwing caves in here. These fish are very, very peaceful. And I've got some African butterfly fish up somewhere here. I don't know where they are. Oh, there they are. Oh yeah, yeah. Do you oh. know every time I see them, do you know what it reminds me of? An arowana. Yeah. Doesn't it? Yeah. It's like a it's a mini arowana, isn't it? Oh absolutely. And I'm definitely not going arowana again because <laughs> I haven't got the space, but no. um it's the closest thing I can get to them and yeah. I really enjoy them. And then down there, here there's, we... there's something about a rack full of little tanks in there on sponge filters. I don't know what it is. I've I've always I did it years ago and I've always wanted to do it again. I've done it's just something about it, isn't there? Yeah. You know, all the little tanks with all the little fish in it. Yeah. You know, it just draws you in, doesn't it? Absolutely. It gives you that, what I call that childhood feeling. Yeah. When you walk into a fish shop, fish shop. you see right. all that bubbling water. Yeah, it? yeah. And all the little tanks with all the little worlds in them. Yeah, that's right. And yeah, that's what you, I wanted to create. You want to create it, yeah, I yeah. know. I'm, I'm, you're making me want to do it again looking at this, do you know what I mean? Because yeah. obviously, I can I can get timber like this from work and just build another rack, you know, and get some little tanks made. It, it, running just off just, it inspired me. To yeah. It was nice having the big fish. Yeah. But it's also nice having that other side of the hobby. That's right. You know, where you, you've got the best of both worlds in here, haven't you? I hope so, mate. I hope so. And say so it's work in progress. Hmm. And we'll, we'll get there. Um, 
nothing to report too much here just a couple of um, lemon eyed blue eyed lemons again an, a bit of a frustrating fish to work with because they never look like how they should do mm. when you buy them from the shop they look amazing and then you get them home and you think what have I got here yeah <laughs> yeah so the jury's out on them I shall probably give them away to a mate or something and start start doing something um, something different there but no they're loved and they're welcome yeah it's lovely mate, I love the fish hook. Oh no, well listen, I, I wish there was more to show really. Um, we, we're, get, we're getting there, we're getting better. Yeah, we'll, well, um, well, we'll yeah, like I say, once you're up here, we'll get more smaller tanks on here. I might get another another air pump or start running T T's and, and elbows and all kinds of crazy things off of here because mm. the pump's powerful enough to power it all. This will be hopefully the only tank on here will, which will be filtered by an external. Yeah. Um, See, what, what would you say is the limit to a sponge then? Because I've I've always had different opinions on it as well, you know. I I had a, um, a tank probably maybe a bit smaller than this with sponges on it about five or six years ago and I had the biggest problems just running, I've had two sponge filters on it. Mm. And I say the maximum on the size a tank to run is something like this with a sponge filter. What do you think? Well, I think there's two things I want to say about that. A sponge is probably one of the best things you can have on a small tank because mm. it's literally keeping the water sweet. You do have to do a lot of siphoning. Yeah. And I think if you can get that balance between siphoning the solid waste out, you're laughing. Yeah. I think probably your percentage of water changes might be larger. Mm. Um, the other way to do it would be to modify the sponge and to have, run it through an ice cream tub and have a load of yeah k1 or something yeah yeah anything yeah and then i think then you, you start to stretch the limit of that yeah um that air power but on a on a tank that's four foot that's gonna have over 100 liters in there and for the flow and for no dead spots yeah if you've got an external user i completely agree with you yeah absolutely because um, i have seen other people with big tanks and they've got like two sponge fills on them yeah. and like you must run into problems you know what i mean you must yeah. be maintaining that tank every day siphoning it out yeah. you know because it's a bit mechanical but there's not a lot drawing into it is it you That's know right, yeah. tank this size is fine isn't it because yeah. you can see the water moving up to here can't you i keep about one or two mil layer of sand on there yeah if i turn that over regularly mm. that actually contributes to the surface area of what's in the tank yeah you know? yeah and i normally when i when i'm setting up a tank i'll take sand from an established tank yeah and it just helps seed it yeah it's, 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 it's cycles doesn't it straight but away these enough. these small filters matured very quickly yeah and i was able to put stock in them very very quickly mm. so the good thing with sponge filters is that once they're running you've always got their confidence that's right yeah uh, don't um don't uh don't abuse them and mm. they'll do exactly what you want them to that's do that's right yeah yeah and how often do you clean your sponges on these tanks I, if I look at them and they're starting to look from the outside that they're starting to get coated, mm. then I shall. Clean yeah. Them. If not, if, if they're looking like that, yeah, I'll just leave them be. Yeah, they're fine. And, and I'll just, I'll just adjust the water. Yeah. I'll just yeah. adjust the water. Because yeah. I've been to some fish shops, fish fish shops in the past, and I've seen the sponge fillers absolutely clogged. Yeah. And um, I spoke to the guy in there in the shop, and he goes, I don't clean my sponge fillers whatsoever. He leaves them clogged up full of mm. he said it's just full of good bacteria as yeah. long as the bubble is still working it's sure. absolutely fine sure, and sure. you know what so many people got all these different views you know and sometimes you don't know what to think but i think there is a fine line between sort of um having something that is really um congealed and clogged because yeah. if a fish does get an injury mm. it'll be a lot easier to get infected yeah um and you do have to think about the flow because if that if that uh, air stone is just basically bubbling and returning back up without yeah. pulling anything through, yeah, then you, you, you're in problems. Yeah, problem. that's, that's what I thought exactly. You've got problems. So, guys, what do you think of this fish room? I think it's absolutely incredible. I think Julian's done a wicked job in it, and he's got a lot more to come as well, all over this side here. So it can be really cool to come back in the next six months or so and see what he's done. <laughs> Look at the size of these typhoons, they're absolutely massive. Look, look at the size of that. Huge plecos. 
Now, shall I build a rack somewhere and start putting some smaller tanks on it again? Maybe these sort of size here, sponge filters. Because I did it years ago and I've always wanted to do it again. I've got a bit more room in my fish room next to my eight foot tank. And I could build a stand, probably three foot, something like that. So maybe six of these, if that makes sense. So one on top, one there, and then two at the bottom. So it'd be six tanks all together. Go out and get some sponge filters run it off an air pump and then start doing a couple of little bits like plecos and stuff because now the winter's coming as well obviously you've got longer nights you can't go out and do things in the evening so um obviously we're going to spend more time with our fish to come and visit visit all these hobbyists in the uk um we're very grateful for it because a lot of us wouldn't have the bottle or the energy to do it yeah but we're very very happy to share and hopefully there'll be people out there watching that will go, I'm not a nutter, I'm not on my own. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and, do, and do it. And if you've, got, if you've got a project that you want to do, do it. Cost it up, it'll happen. Mm. No, I appreciate it, that's a good bit of advice that is. But anyway mate, you should be proud. Hey. Thanks for having me over. Thanks for, thanks for coming mate. And I'm and looking that. forward to seeing Yeah. All of these tanks over here as well, and yes, I yeah. think you've inspired me again to do another rack with some smaller tanks and some sponge fillers. So I think yeah, I'm yeah. gonna, I've got a little bit of room in my fish room. I said earlier, I think I'm gonna build something. I've got some timber line out down my yard. I might build something, get some tanks that sort of size, and maybe start doing a couple of small fish again. Yeah, because there is something about it in there. Absolutely, man. absolutely. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for having me over, Julian. Honestly, it's been a pleasure, mate. Keep it real everyone, like and subscribe the channel, and yeah, keep it real. Thank you. Cheers.